Good day traders, this is Stefanos on behalf of Tixi and in today's webinar we'll be giving a look back of the market for the week of the 5th until the 9th of September. Looking at some of the highlights for over the course of the past week, uh, we had the fact that the ECB hiked the interest rates in what was one of the biggest hikes after keeping the rates in negative territory since 2014, something I will be discussing uh, more about later on. Uh, but first a disclaimer as always please know that all of the ideas discussed in the webinar are my own opinions and do not make up for any form of investment trading advice neither any recommendations to buy or sell you should always do your own research and due diligence before buying or selling any securities financial products or instruments and whether you use any kind of trading strategies and information that relates to past performance is not indicative of future results <music> So we're actually going to be kicking things off uh, with stocks and we're going to be uh, delving back into the uh, interest rates of the ECB later on. Uh, so yeah, looking at stocks, uh, they were mostly in positive territory, uh, closing the week in the green on Friday. Now looking at some of at the three major US indices. Uh, so first of all, we're going to be looking at the Dow 30. Uh, you can just type in US 30 and it should be appearing uh, on your Tixi Web Trader. And if we just switch this on the weekly time frame, we can see that it's pretty much paired back the losses that were made all throughout last week, and they've been uh, been paired up, and then and then some over the course of this past week. Uh, then looking at the S and P 500, you can just type in US 500 on this occasion, uh, and it's pretty much you can see more or less the same situation. And we can look at the Nasdaq as well. Uh, and for this one you can just type in tech and you can see us tech which is essentially the nasdaq 100 and pretty much the same situation so all three major us indices in positive uh, territory now the positive moves came as investors are expecting to see a decrease in the inflation reading uh, down from eight and a half percent in july to 8.1 percent in august uh, and we also had one of the u.s major banks was fargo uh, whose economists expect inflation to record the steepest monthly decline since the peak of the pandemic in April 2020, something that is also uh, slightly fueled by a pullback in gas prices, as per a Reuters report. Uh, now, something that's even more impressive uh, for this week is that for the S&P 500, all 11 major S&P 500 sectors traded higher, and obviously you had several high growth stocks such as let's say amazon uh, google apple uh, also reporting gains in the range between 1.6 and 3 uh, percent as well so we'll just switch to some individual stocks instead so we mentioned let's look at amazon first you can see pretty much it's somewhat mirroring what we saw earlier on with the the moves that the u.s indies has made uh, if we look at uh, google pretty much the same situation and let's have a look at apple as well as the last one and we're pretty much going to be seeing more or less i mean it wasn't the same as the other two but it's still in the green and positive territory which was obviously the general picture uh, for stocks over the course of the last week uh, so yeah this is with regards to stocks now moving on to forex uh, as we mentioned the ecb hiked the rates in what was uh, one of the biggest hikes uh, since 2014 uh, all the way back then there were the the interest rates they were still in negative territory uh, so they actually raised the rates by 75 basis points on this occasion or 0 0.75 percent um, but one of the key words from the monetary from the ecb's monetary policy meeting was the fact that they mentioned that there will be more hikes to follow suit as well so this is just telling us that it's not going to be the last time they're going to be hiking rates over the course of the of the year in the next couple of of months as well uh, if we look at the euro dollar uh, after the comments that were made, uh, as one would expect, the uh, the currency pair will rise in value. And as we'll see from the chart itself, I'm still keeping it on the weekly time frame, uh, we can see that it pretty much uh, rose by close to uh, 100 pips. And it took the currency pair uh, slightly back above over the 1.00 uh, level, as you can see right here. Uh, so yeah, overall, a pretty, uh, pretty good week for uh, any euro traders uh, i mean obviously euro euro, do euro dollar uh, more specifically but if we look let's say also at the euro canadian as an example 
I'll just wait for the chart to load so you can see it was pretty much in positive territory. Uh, we can also look at the Euro Great British Pound, which I think was a little bit more neutral. I will see from the chart now as well. Uh, so also in positive territory and the Euro Pound is actually printed its let's see, six consecutive week in the green as well. Uh, so yeah, overall pretty good uh, week for the for the Euro. Uh, and lastly, we're going to be looking at oil and gold. Uh, now looking at oil prices, let me just pull up the chart as well. Now uh, they started the week in somewhat of a negative territory. Now remember, this past week we started off with Tuesday because it was uh, a public holiday. It was US Labor Day on Monday, so we didn't really trade on Monday. And it started off the week, as you can see, like going in the negative, uh, but towards the very end of the week, pretty much paired back most of the losses. So if I switch on the weekly, you can see it's pretty much forming uh, a dodgy candlestick. Uh, now this came uh, from comments that was made by OPEC, uh, who mentioned that they'd be cutting 100,000 bar barrels per day to its quotas. And it also announced it could take additional steps to shore up prices as needed. So it's something that's more or less similar uh, to the tone that was uh, that was mentioned by the ECB in the sense that they hiked the rates and they mentioned that there'd, there'd be more to come. It was pretty much the similar case with OPEC cutting down uh, the production by 100,000 barrels and then saying they'd be uh, looking to take on additional steps uh, to prop up prices even further uh, if needed. Uh, now prices uh, dropped close to six percent. Uh, if we look, if we look back on the daily time frame and reaching the lows all the way down here, and they pretty much recovered most of those losses to close, pretty much uh, closing into break-even territory. Uh, and if we look at gold as well, uh, that mostly had to do, I'd say, with the inverse relationship between the dollar and gold. Uh, the dollar index did fall. Uh, over the course of the week, again, probably in anticipation of the inflation data that's supposed to come out uh, next week as well. Uh, and with the drop of the of the US dollar, we can see that uh, the, uh, the gold prices rose as well over the course of the week. It wasn't a significant gain, uh, but nevertheless, we can see it's more or less reacting to the uh, to the lows down here as it's finding some support uh, with prices rising by 0.44% or uh, $7. Uh, and yeah, there you have it. This as far as the look back and review for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video, you found it useful, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Until then, trade safe.